Hello, I'm Dane and I, your host for the series Makeup for the Theater. In this lesson, we'll be working with crepe wool. We'll be showing you the techniques used to prepare crepe wool and how to apply it. I learned many of these techniques from my dad, who over the years designed countless different styles of beards. When you are working with crepe wool, preparation is half the battle, and that's where we'll begin. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Webster Phillips. He's a contemporary of my dad, and in recent years, Webb and I have worked together on quite a few shows. He has a colorful list of credits, which include the Marx Brothers classic, A Night of the Opera. He did Les Miserables and the original Mutiny on the Bounty. Recently, he was in charge of Lou Grant in the Bronx Zoo. Webster, crepe wool takes a lot of preparation, doesn't it? Oh, it surely does. It really does. This is a very expensive beard, $300 at least. And I'm going to show you all a more inexpensive way to work and a better way to work. Right. Without spending so much money. Well, what have we got here? Well, we have this five shades of crepe wool. Auburn, black, dark brown, light brown, and medium gray. Of these shades, there's a, two or three you should use in the beard to make it look natural. And in the uh, actor that we're going to make up in a few minutes, we'll be using uh, his basic tone, which is the dark brown. And mm -hmm. um, will you be using a one shade lighter and a one shade darker for sure, huh? Oh, definitely. Okay. I'd like to show you a way we prepare this, this hair. I'm going to cut this in half so that you'll get an idea. I'll use the whole thing. What use the, the whole thing. This is a big oh. budget. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> All right, then you pull it out such, and then you see these little strings in here. You cut those strings and uh, pull it out some more and cut more strings. That's the way they... They pack it to ship it to you. It's about it has, a yard, usually. Oh, it's about a yard, yes. Yeah. And there's quite more, there's more hair here than you think, by the way it looks, the way it spreads out. Yeah, I think the tendency for most students is to um, try and have as, as much hair possible, but... Uh, yes, they do, and they, you can use too much, and if you use too much of this, the beard would look too much, too packed. Let's yeah, cut another little bit. Cut there. a little bit. You can work if you have a partner. You can do this together. Oh, yes. This is the twine that holds the crepe wool together. This wool, by the way, comes from England, and uh, the uh, material is uh, comes out of the... Uh, off. These are short ends uh, that they get out of the mills. And uh, the material is quite expensive. It's nowhere near as expensive as uh, that of that natural or the human hair that we saw in that beard a moment ago that uh, human hair or yak, yak beard hair costs about $250, $300 a pound, whereas a yard of wool sells anywhere from, oh, say, 6 to $8 a yard. You see how kinky this hair is. It can be used on some occasions. Uh, rabbis uh, yeah. usually have it hanging down the side when they need that. They always wear it that way. So you can make it even only for that that I know of. So you really can't apply it. Um, you cannot apply it this any kinky, other way. This kinky, you can't either work with it hardly. Yeah. So what we do, we take it. I'm going to cut this little last bit off. Okay. It's stuck here. And um, to show you how to straighten the hair, you take this that's un all kinked, put it in the water. What well, what Just temperature do you? Oh, use? the temperature would be a kind of a warm water. Okay, sort of not warm. too hot. Not too hot. What happens if it's real hot? Well, it gets too straight. It does, and yeah. you, you don't want to lose all the you uh, wanna, curl? You want to lose, you want to have it about half curly, okay. not curly, so that the hair, if it's too straight, it will uh, pack too tightly and won't look natural. Okay. I'll put that over there. We lay it on there, and that will dry in about six, eight hours. Overnight, that'll dry about right. It'll be come out nicely. Now, okay. these have been done the same way overnight, and they've straightened out quite well, quite nicely here. And um, for instance, you can work with it now. And you reach down, you pull a little hair out so, and I'll do this a little bit more, untwist it slightly, pull it out. So this is the, uh, this technique is the, is the major technique in actually getting the wool ready to apply it to ready. the face. Uh -huh. And you see how that pulls out so easily. Okay, you're, you're careful now, not to, to pull in too close here, but you yes. pull out here a little bit, right? To be right? sure that, yes. And then you just pull this together. And then if there's a clump in there that looks like there is, you can separate that slightly there with your fingers. 
Separate it from the middle. Separate from the middle and then grab the ends and pull it very gently out like that. And you can see how that's thinning out nicely. If there is a clump there, you go in there again and just kind of separate it. Where did you get over. your training, Webb? Oh, I got, I was taught by my father. And his name was? His name was, they used to call him Dad Phillips. Dad Phillips. Yeah. Um, his name was F.B. Phillips. F.B. Phillips, yeah. that he was dad. And I understand that he was one of the founders of the makeup union. And he uh, was, and in fact, it was started and organized in our house when I was just a little chafer. Really? Yeah. And you were the youngest, uh, I do I understand? I was the youngest in the family of makeup artists. Uh -huh. And how many uh, other were there? Are there oh, how many brothers uh, were there? Two brothers, I know. my dad, myself, yeah. and uh, nephews now. I know Fred, he's a, yes. he's a very wonderful man. Fred did all the Star Treks. You know? Yeah, he certainly did. Thank you. Well, anyway, here we go. I'll show you how to blend these a little bit. Okay, now, now we've gone to our dark brown wool at this point, and uh, Webb's going to repeat the same process, pulling the hair apart. Now, you notice that we do have a comb set out here and the uh, comb is a, a way for you to, to pull some of the shortest ends out of your little bundles. Mm -hmm. When you go to apply that wool to the face, the little short pieces sometimes don't stick very well. So you can see that combing them out is a, is a good... You can't make a mistake with this. This is fun. Yeah, looks like you're just having great. fun. You just kind of like a taffy pull. It's just great. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that because I know a lot of students that really <laughs> dread lane beards. See, when it gets clumpy, you just kind of do that, lay it over like that. And, yeah. just, and then if you want to blend, now these okay. colors, you take, say, a half a part of this, yeah. and you can do it right in your hands, and you kind of separate it in the middle like that and blend it in the center. I see, it so apart. It's, you're kind of, are you weaving it together I'm weaving at it that together point? from the center. And then you take it from the sides, and as you see, the darkness is blending into that mer that um, auburn color. Gee, that, that doesn't look too hard. No, and then there's a clump of hair there. You grab it and you pull it apart like that very easily. Turn the hair one way or the other, and you'll find that it blends nicely. Now, that's quite a bit lighter than this by quite a, quite a bit. You bet. And it's quite a bit... Uh, well, it's a little bit darker than that, well, is but this you can change it whichever way you wish. Is this something you do right before you laid your beard, or would you... I prepare this before I... Try to work ahead. Work ahead a little bit, and then as I work, I change it as I work, too. Now, if you happen to have it not completely blended, don't worry about it. You can't make a mistake. Just you keep just, watching just, it. Just watch it, and as you work the hair up, even though there's a little heaviness in one place, as I would lay it on his... Then the next time you lay the hair over and you, you well, I'll show you when we lay the beard how Good. that works. Well, now let's show them now the uh, wool that we have prepared already for today's lesson. Oh yes, here we have. This has all been done, like I have shown you. All these colors are are in this uh, these packages, so they're easy to use and easy to work. Well, let's just show you. You know, the, I'm com I, I hear the question a lot. How much hair do I need to put this beard on with? Okay, what we've got here. We've got all of these colors that have been prepared, and you can see that we have uh, five stacks, including this material right mm -hmm. here, of hair. Now that could have been done also, if I may interject, yeah. from the hackle. Here's a hackle that's very hard, it's very, a lot, oh, it's like needles. You bet. So when you work with it's a hackle, too. but it, it is easy to work, but it is not necessary at all to use the hackle, in fact, as you blend these, you can take a little of the gray and you work it in like that, twist it at the end and kind of, you can work the same kind of way I told you and then pull it through the hackle. If you have to work real fast or do a lot of people, you'd use the hackle. But it isn't necessary, but it's kind of convenient sometimes for you to use the hackle. Just a little explanation about the hackle. And you always put this balsa wood on top because those needles yeah. are... Uh, they're dangerous, they aren't they? They bring blood. Yeah, they certainly Did you ever do. you see that? I have seen it quite a few <laughs> times when I've been okay. using now, the hackle myself. This is equal to two and a half yards of wool. If you were to take each yard and cut it in half, wet it, dry it, and pull it apart, this is what you'd end up with. So how, much, how many beards oh, would this do? Oh, you can make do? several beards with that, several. Okay. Like that beard over there, you can practice on that head. Tell them... Tell them about that. Well, this is one of those toughy heads. It's a rubber head. And I used this particular head uh, when I was um, uh, practicing for my makeup test uh, to get in the union. It's a great way to develop your own skills as a makeup artist. 
and I recommend practice a lot. And uh, another way is to, another technique uh, with the head is to make beards in advance. So if you're doing a, a pretty large show, um, you can make um, a dozen beards. Make say. several in advance, and then they're all prepared when you go to the show. Oh, great! And you can make different colored ones and fit them on the actor that would wear it best. Well, it looks like we're ready to go. I'm huh? ready. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we now have plenty of wool to lay our our beard with. And I'd like to uh, give Webb a few minutes to set up his tools. It's very important that you have all the tools necessary to complete this complicated task. My dad always taught me to lay my equipment out in an organized fashion so that I'd never waste time looking for something. These are some of the tools we'll be using for our demonstration. Crepe wool, scissors, tweezers, acetone and bowl, latex thin with distilled water, eyebrow pencil, fine tooth comb, spirit gum remover. Some optional tools include hackle with cover, stove and iron. In review, we've prepared five shades of hair to work with. However, three may be sufficient. Usually choose one closest to the actor's own hair. Then one a shade darker and one a shade lighter. This way, you can mix these three together to highlight and shadow the hair. It looks a lot more natural than a one-color beard. Now I'd like to introduce you to our model, Mark Yammer. He's a professional dancer with the Mary Jane Eisenberg Dance Company. Webb, shall we begin? Let's do. You, you put the spirit gum on the chin. This is a very key part of the beard where you start it. The, the old uh, makeup term is uh, keystone, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, that's what I learned. Now you turn your head this way. A little more this way, I think. Now he can he can look straight while you straight you're ahead for this one, yeah. For this one, sure. Okay. And you put this just under the chin. Just tap it with your scissor. Cut it there. Go oh, right nice. behind it. Hold it. And you go right behind with the second one. You lay it right behind that one. And you lay it right in there and tap it with your scissor. You take the other part, and you go back for a third one, right behind it. So it's one, two, three. You take another little piece. You lay it up close here, and you turn your head back toward the center. I'm mean, not doing it right there. That's right. And you lay this just above it, on the chin. Little more, another move again. I'd like to show you a design that my dad created. This is, uh, allows us to take a look at the uh, way to work in sections on the face. As you can see, each section is numbered in the order of application. The hair laid overlaps the previous section. This covers up the attached pieces with loose hair. If you noticed, along the lower edge of the um, jawline, the diagram was numbered Easy. 3, 4, 5, 6. Now Webb is very uh, quick at laying hair. He may hold enough hair in his hand to apply to section 3, 4 at the same time. He may join sections 5 and 6. But you get the idea that one section follows right behind another section. The hair is pressed and fanned using the uh, blades of the scissors. He puts it down and lays section four and presses. Okay, now just slow down a little bit for the, for the students out there, Webb, because they don't want to miss a trick here. He fans the hair out and presses it to the end of the jawline there and cuts. That piece can now be used, say, at the beginning of the sideburn. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and notice there's a little scrap there. You could throw it on the floor, but Webb's found a place for it to go at the beginning of the, uh, at the corner of the, the chin. The spirit gum gets on here, so you have to keep it, keep the glue off your right hand and off your hands and off the scissor. That's so I use acetone between each cut almost. We went to the store and bought some custard cups. And these work as wonderful finger bowls. You can put your spirit gum in them. You can put acetone in them. Okay, we're going to repeat the same process on the other side. He's using plenty of gum. Now remember, gum does dry out. Don't do the whole face at once because it will dry out on you and you're just going to have to put more uh, spirit gum in place. Webb is very frugal with the hair he's using. I've seen some makeup artists lay a hair that was halfway down his chest, but I think it's wasteful to do it that way, especially when you consider how long it takes you to prepare the wool. Mm -hmm. I think there's a certain feeling of accomplishment in using the minimum amount of hair. Notice he's fanning the hair out, and pressing and cutting. Now he had a section of hair, he cut it in half and this is the second half of hair. Angle cut, press, cut on an angle and then press back. This is the foundation at the base of the jawline. A little bit more here. Now we're, we'd go, we're now proceeding with sections, the second uh, layer, which would be 7, 8, 9, 10. 7 and 8 uh, begin down next to the chin. Notice how he fans the, uh, the hair out. Now the higher you go, the thinner the hair is. <coughs> so the hair way up on the uh, side of the cheek is very sparse. Notice Webb's changed the color a little bit here, too. The hair does not always uh, remain the same. And that's why we prepared uh, several variations of the blend of those original five colors. Keep clean as you go. The acetone uh, instantly uh, works as an, a cleaning uh, solvent. Nothing, there's nothing worse than having the hair all over your fingers, like a bird's nest. Notice how the uh, subject participates in this. This just makes it easier to wear quicker. Now this is the beginning of the, this is the base of the sideburn. Notice again that each cut, as long as he's got something of the hair, can become the next layer. Holding it along on an edge there. And again, notice the hair is uh, flowing back towards the ear at this point. Now Mark uh, recently had his, his hair cut, as you can see. It makes it a little trickier for the makeup artist to blend to his hair, but I think you can see we're pretty successful here. It's hard to tell where it stops and starts. Now we haven't trimmed it so far. We haven't combed it or trimmed it up a little bit back of the uh, that little lay, and he's going to. His hair is so thin at that point. He's gone ahead and actually put a little spiritum right in there, so that'll stick. Okay, now there's a little interim uh, step here that, that Webb follows, and that is to press his beard firmly into the, into the face. 
Now you can use a towel, the end of the hair cloth works fabulous here. Really, really press. <laughs> I pressed. <laughs> you pressed all right. Oh yeah. The trick of it is to really press it as tight as you can. Do you have any bridge work? No. Okay. okay. Lay it right in there. That's a good question. Especially if you're working with an older actor. If you're making up your um, makeup instructor, be sure and uh, try that question on uh, he or she. You get the bottom part, the base of it kind of combed out, so it looks thin. It should be so you can see a pencil or something right through the hair. Then as you lay the top over it now and get the nice part done, that you can comb it and it'll stay on all day. Could you put your thumb just underneath the, um, the chin, just so we can see your thumb underneath, to get an idea how long that beard really is? Uh -huh. Yeah, just stick your thumb straight underneath. Yeah, about a thumb's length, would you say? About, yes. Yeah. Try that thumb's length as a rule of thumb when you're trying to figure out how far to cut your hair. As I said, some people tend to lay that hair, um, you know, a good 50% farther down than they need to. And then they just cut it and it becomes waste. All right, this becomes, lays 7, 8, 9, 10. And um, then up along the side of the sideburn once mm -hmm. more. Where did I put the scissors? There they are now. <laughs> there they are. There they are. Yeah. It's easy to lose your scissors for, with all the maids. Okay, hold this just a little bit. Good. Keep, keep your patron in action. Okay. Now you, you take your thumb and you, lay, you push forward with that hair. See how it separates just with a thumb movement. And it spreads it and thins it. And it makes it look so much more realistic that way. Webb's doing that just about every time he's putting the hair down though he hasn't mentioned it uh, up until now. Now, as he changes the hair color from the, the mixture of the, of the dark brown at the base of the chin and, and goes to a gray mixture, this makes the, uh, mm -hmm. the whole thing look a little bit more transparent to the eye. You, you can't tell where the, you don't see any big clumps when you go to a lighter color like a gray mixture. You push that forward, it separates the hair a little bit. And then you touch it in with just the tip of the scissors. Cut it. Lay a little in there. Have an irregular line. Don't have that, don't have that be a straight line. The darkest, uh, the hardest beard to apply is the darkest beard. Because you can see the outline of, of all of your, um, your your laid hair against the skin. Also you use, now and then if you're, fin you know, you're finished and there's a little spot, you can just touch it lightly with a pencil and kind of fill in your mistake if you make a mistake, because you can't make a mistake doing it anyway, where you can always fix it with that. That's a way to fix the holes. You fix the mistake a little bit. We also mentioned that uh, in your basic uh, selection of tools, that you'd keep some tweezers on hand. Mm -hmm. Tweezers are nice because you can use them to pull out uh, maybe a thick clump. Okay, we're back to the sideburn. Again, look at that angle. It's growing downward, or it's drawing downward. Now his hair is very fine there, so I'm gonna go up into his hair slightly, and, uh, and try to let that hair grow the same, come out the same as this direction his hair is growing. Sometimes you go even back, and it <laughs> hides that blend nicely. Kind okay, of. the hair is spread. He pushes it down and then he actually releases the hair for a second and then grips it a little farther down. You notice there's a little bit of hair sticking to the scissors, so he's about ready to use his acetone bowl again. Yeah, just about. A little word of caution. This uh, beard is highly flammable. Do not let anyone smoke near you. Keep uh, any kind of flame away from the acetone. Acetone is very flammable. We don't recommend acetone as a solvent for removing the beard because it's so drying on the skin. 
There is a uh, spirit gum remover that's available that, that's, that's quite good as a solvent. After the uh, beard is completed, we're going to show you how to begin to remove the beard if time permits. I'm just a little tighter here to make that blend a little better. And you always want to keep your eyes, the main part is keeping your eyes on the point of the scissors. So you will never cut the person. If you watch the point of the scissors, whatever you do, you won't give the guy a, a little nick you didn't expect to. When was the last time you took a little nick out of the <laughs> oh. web? Well, I hate to mention it. <laughs> but you only do it once, you never do it again. Yeah, well, was it I cut a, the guy's hair almost or, uh, off? No, no. A famous uh, actor that... Uh, Oh, way back. I, I can't think. I'm trying to think of the name of the show now. Now, you just let a little bit of that hair kind of tuck in there, trim it, and this softens the mistakes you made below. If you made a few mistakes, don't worry about it, because you can always correct it. Now, I'm going to turn his head a little bit this way so you can see that I'm going to lay a little bit in here of this color. And I don't think we've hardly thrown any hair away. Next time you lay a beard, look on the floor after you got done to see just what's sitting there. And if there's a lot of hair, you've been wasteful. That's why this uh, rubber head is such a, a, a nifty way to practice. It allows you to lay a beard. If you don't like something about it, you can pull it off. You don't have to have a subject sitting there being your guinea pig. Although it is nice to have a subject to be your guinea pig from time to time. I want to do a mustache. Is that all right? You bet. Let's. Uh... This is a little different. You take a smaller brush and look, turn your head slightly that way, and you just put it there where his hair is growing, and let it come down here towards the beard because it is part of it. Actually, I think mine's the same way. Yes, it is. <laughs> and then you come over here. And I'm trying to get the touch. Now we'll take a little of this uh, color. I think this is nice. Make an old man out of him. Huh? You take a very little bit of hair and straighten it out nicely so that and cut the mustache hair in half. And you lay it just so. Hold that a minute. Just hold that. Got it? I gotta clean my scissors. It's got sticky glue on it. Okay, thanks. Okay, now this uh, first section that you put down is the bridge between the the uh, beard and the mustache. Notice it's growing on it. It's growing and laid at an angle. Keep your eyes on the point of the scissors all the time. Yeah, this is it's uh, embarrassing to cut somebody the tip of somebody's uh, nose. Painful too. I go from one side to the other with the same hank of hair so that if I run out, both sides will match and I can start the other side and this side with another area of hair that might be slightly different shade. That's good. What's the point of the scissors? Notice he's working with a very small amount of hair. Here he's separating the hair. Um, you always want the hair to come out the same direction your thumb is. And then you can cut it from various beveled angles as you seek. And I'm going to lay it on this side here, just a little bit there, more beveling. Well, this is basically the uh, technique that my father used. 
and uh, I'm, I'm certainly uncomfortable with this technique. It works, uh, it works very nice. It's satisfying to have a beard looking so real. Oh, I threw some away. Then you take this and you press it good and tight. Because he hates to have lunch and have the beard coming out in your lunch and in your food. I used to cut Orson Welles' hair, but I used to have fun dropping the, the, his haircut in his hamburger. He didn't seem to know the difference. <laughs> but it was kind of fun. He, he was, was uh, what we call a real good feeder. Yeah. Then you comb this out real good. After you've pressed it tight, you can comb it as hard as you wish, and that won't come out. Now I want to just give you, show you a little touch how to, how to uh, curl it. But first, I want to get these little bit of hairs just above his lip out. These uh, little hairs right b b below the lip, uh, just like a real mustache will annoy the heck out of the actor. So this is a fine little... Um, Important. This is where you're sprucing up your work. You find if you do work like that, that the actors will come back to you to have their mustache fixed and their hair because they know you're careful and you won't bother them all day with the wrong way it's been laid. You won't now, cut them and you won't annoy them. I brought a stove along. I'm going to just heat uh, one of these irons, a little mustache iron. These irons are the tools of a professional makeup artist, and we're going to show you how to lift the hair with the iron um, on one side of the beard. On the other side, we're going to show you how to dress the beard using a formula of distilled water and white liquid latex. Now notice, it came out pretty darn hot, and the little little trick is to take a tissue and Shoot bite it. down on the Kleenex. So it's okay, it isn't too bad. When he flips the uh, iron around, obviously that uh, takes the uh, heat away. For instance, over here, if, if I feel like I want that, don't, don't move your head now, it's kind of warm. It's what you call hot. Then you can lift this out right close and make it look like the hair is growing right out of his face just by lifting it and a little touch. My father always said that you could tell a good makeup artist if you could lay a crepe wool beard that actual uh, human hair or yak hair has a lot more body to it and frankly it's a lot easier to lay than a crepe wool beard. So if you can master one of these I guarantee you that if you ever got a hold of some, some human hair or, or yak that you do a now, beautiful job. If you don't have the irons and all of that, you can easily shape that beard with a latex and water, liquid latex here, there's liquid latex in the bottle, and fresh water, distilled water. There's, it's already been mixed. So you mix them kind of half and half, very, very thinly. And then you get it on your hands and give it a little of this. The, you'll uh, watch that'll start to take a curl. And it'll hold a certain shape. Now this is when you don't have irons and all to work with. You can kind of make that beard have a personality. Now you notice that the liquid latex here is very thin. I'd say it's, very it's thin. three parts water to one part liquid latex. Use distilled water because the distilled water is, there is actually distilled water in the rubber. That's what this liquid latex is. And it won't ball up on you if you, if you do that. A tap water will ball up in you, with you and, and it won't work quite does as nice. Does that seem to be taking on a shape now? It, yes. A little it, bit? It sure Like does. it's curled, as though you had an iron to do it with. Now I'll clean my fingers and I'll show you how to float that off. We call it floating it off. Before we do that, I'd like to ask Mark to um, rotate his face to camera so our audience can take a good close look at how that beard is growing. On the sides, you can see that it's growing back towards the ear. 
and it changes directions gradually as it reaches the uh, the chin. Okay. Over here, the same, a little bit. Now, you can't make a mistake in makeup. You can always fix it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm fixing something I saw yeah. I had made a mistake. Yeah, you know, um, one of the advantages that you have in your own makeup room is that you'll be working into a mirror. And when you work you into a see. mirror, uh -huh. you, can get you can have a chance to look at your mistakes. A little bit of it. Sometimes uh, hair will pack. That's what we use this for. The, the uh, little tweezers will separate the hair up close to the face sometime. I'm just showing you how to use this. Yeah, that's uh, Great. fairly close. Mark, would you just lean back and let's just take a look underneath so you guys can get an idea of what, what the hair looks like under there. Very the, nice. The first key part does this the way you want it so that it looks natural. Now you can lower that like me. Uh, we're going to do now, a little... Now, a lot of times, and you've probably been asked this before, can you save the beard? I mean, it, it's gorgeous. Or so, you can use this beard... Uh, several times now after. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you how to float this off. This can be floated off with a little alcohol and a brush. This is a pretty good brush, I guess, for this. Now, because our time is limited today, we're going to float off the first corner, and you're going to have a chance to see how the, the, uh, the beard will come off uh, together. And we have a material. I'll show you, too, to put you put a towel here because sometimes the alcohol will run down and this is just for the actor's convenience and so it won't run down his neck. So I put that there. This, this is, is alcohol. Simple isopropyl alcohol. And we're just going to release some of this. Now where you've applied the thinnest amount of hair, you may have some hair that, that will not come off entirely and you may after you apply the the beard for the second time you'll probably go back and overlay overlay yes. those thin edges but nonetheless the body of the beard is intact Webb, have during the the years that you've worked have you ever used liquid latex to apply a beard i have some some people are, li are a little uh, have been uh, allergic to spirit gum right and spirit well, gum isn't fun to wear anyway but uh, it's yes, the, I have. Which is a better adhesive, liquid latex or spirit gum? It's more, it's easier and better to work with spirit gum. Yeah. Much better. Well, I would say that um, probably five to one use spirit gum over liquid latex. Oh, yes. Spirit gum stays tacky, whereas liquid latex tends to dry. And it gets, uh, it doesn't hold its shape as well. Now, we're starting to pull. You can see we're starting to, to, to loosen that edge. It's... Uh, important to, to use that and notice it's pulling apart now we're going to have to stop right here but there's a couple more things we want to tell you about pulli pulling off the beard on the interior side of the beard what would you use to hold the whole thing together after you take the beard off it'll come off just like this turn your head see this beard folds right off nicely it just lays right the way it was up here. Now it slides right off very easily. And say you had the whole thing down, you'd lay that on the table. And for the, to hold it so it won't fall apart, so like that one is, on that head there. This now what's is, this material? This is a Krylon. It's a kind of a matte finish Krylon. It's a, something from an art it's supply It's an art, art supply. Yes. It has nothing to do with the theatrical maker. No. But uh, let me be sure this is, yeah, it's okay. Now, get it, keep it away from his face, but I often will spray that like that. Now and that will hold that beard tight, so until you use it next time. What about using liquid latex on the inside of the beard? Would that be possible? You can use liquid latex, yes. If you don't have this, you can take yeah. liquid la latex like I used to, to tighten the beard and to curl it, it kind of holds it. Then you put that a little heavier on the inside and it'll work just like the Krylon. Now this will hold it pretty well. It won't fall apart. So you can stick that right up again on, on the man or another actor or somebody, even your mother. Probably a man. Look at that. 
Boy, that's great. <laughs> Webb, well, that's a wonderful but beard. But I mean, that's a, that, a demonstration of how that works. Well, thank you. I, I think that uh, everyone watching this program is going to feel a lot more comfortable about getting into a beard. As you just have seen, this is also a very effective way to change an actor's appearance. With the right techniques, the possibilities are endless. Take plenty of time for preparation and practice. Each time you lay hair, you'll probably have better results. Thank you for joining us, and look for our next series of Ben Nye's Makeup for the Theater.